What's up, guys? My name is Liam, and today we're going to be talking about the Lamzu Atlantis OG V2 4K. This is the mouse that Tens is currently using. I have seen other pros recently switching over to this mouse, and this currently sits in my number one top spot as being my main, right next to the Lamzu Atlantis Mini. However, is this going to be the perfect gaming mouse for you? Let's check it out. And before we get started, I do want to let you know that I did reach out to Lamzu. I asked them to send me out all these mice. They did send them to me. However, with that being said, everything in this video that you're going to be hearing today is going to be my truthful, honest opinions and my own words. All right, so starting out, if you are interested in picking up any one of these mice, there's a couple of differences that I'm going to show you guys. I'm going to explain that all to you here really quick. This is the Lamzu Atlantis OG V2 4K. This is the charcoal edition. They also have the exact same thing available for the mini version as well. And then they have two different options. They have the Lamzu Atlantis OG V2 Pro Edition. And the Pro comes in two colors. It comes in the polar white colorway and the elegant blue colorway by Nacho Customs. And really the major difference is, is if you're picking up the Lamzu Atlantis OG V2 4K or the Lamzu Atlantis Mini, these mice do actually come with the 4K dongle included. And the price on both of these mice actually comes in at $99.99. So as you can see here, upon opening up the box, it will include the 4K receiver inside the box on both the mini and on the OG V2 4K. And when it comes to the pro version, both in the polar white and in the elegant blue colorway, both of these mice are also 4K compatible. The only difference is, is that when you purchase the mouse, these mice only come included with just the original USB dongle, and this is only compatible for 1K. In order to be able to use 4K with these mice, you are going to have to purchase the 4K dongle separately. And the current pricing on the Polar White and Elegant Blue are coming at $91.99. And if you did want to opt for the 4K option, the dongle is coming in at $13.99. Comes this little foam packaging right here, and here's what the dongle looks like. Here shortly in the video, I'm gonna go over the software and I'm gonna go over how to pair the dongle to the mouse if that's something you're interested in seeing. And when comparing these mice to one another, there truly isn't really any differences. All three of these mice all come with the same coating. So let's go ahead and drop a weight comparison between all three to see if we can find any differences. And when it comes to the weight of the Polar White Pro Edition, looks like we got this coming in at 57.1 grams. And next up, when it comes to the Elegant Blue, pretty much same thing, 57.2 grams. Last but not least, when it comes to the Charcoal Edition with the stock skates on it, it looks like this is coming in at about a gram less at 56.2 grams. And for those of you that are wondering why the charcoal comes in at one gram less, it's simply just because the type of plastic that is used for the charcoal is just slightly a bit lighter. Can I notice a difference between the one gram when switching back and forth between these three mice? Absolutely not. It doesn't do any difference to the balancing or anything like that in my opinion. And for transparency, I know this video is centered around the OG V2 4K, but since I didn't get a chance to do this in my Lamzu Atlantis 4K video, I'll go and throw up the mini editions really quickly as well. And for the Mini Pro in the polar white colorway, it looks like we got this one weighing in at approximately 52.0 grams. Next up for the Elegant Blue Mini with the stock skates, it looks like this one is also coming in at 52.0 grams. And finally, when it comes to the Charcoal Mini, the 4K edition, this one is coming in at approximately 51.0 grams. So pretty much we're seeing the same thing as we did with OG V2 4K, just with the charcoal plastic being just slightly a bit lighter. And when it comes to the cable that is included with these in the charcoal edition, as you can see here, you get this black USB-C cable. The elegant blue, you do get a elegant blue colorway and it does have the white accents. And then in the polar white edition, you do get this lighter blue looking cable and this also has the white accents on it. And the grips that come in all three versions, all three of them come with black grips. And all three of these mice, they do come with a larger set of skates as well. And the last thing is that the Pro Editions, they do come with these dongle holders. The Charcoal Edition, since it doesn't come with the traditional dongle, it just includes the 4K receiver with it. And it's exactly the same thing with the Mini version. The only difference with the Mini version is that they do come included with dot skates and the OG V2 4K does not come included with dot skates. The build quality of all these mice, I've been interchanging them, using them all back and forth for about the past couple weeks now, and I haven't come across any issues. When I first did pull them out of the box, they creaked like once or twice on me, but I really think that it was just the top shell seating to the bottom shell, because even now when I press on them, 
and I'm trying to test them out. I haven't noticed anything, no movement, no creaking, anything like that. The switches on all my copies have been perfect. Like literally almost no pre-travel. Has a nice bottom out there, almost nearly zero post-travel. Even if I try and push on the front of the switch and I push pretty hard, it's almost impossible to touch down on the base of the front of the mouse. Even on the right switch, nearly zero pre-travel, very minimal post-travel, almost none once it bottoms out there. And overall, all these copies just feel completely solid for me. The scroll wheel has nice defined steps, easy to spam, lightweight, not too firm or anything like that. And the middle scroll wheel button feels great. It feels nice and easy to spam, nice and springy, and you get a really good click. The same thing when coming over the side buttons, there's almost zero pre-travel and very minimal post-travel. Once you put the switch in, it has a nice firm stop there in the back. And these side switches, they feel perfect. They feel nice and crisp. The coating on all the mice, I truly am a huge fan of this coating. I do feel like the more that you use this, I do feel like this, the coating kind of smooths out, but overall it's just super grippy. I haven't had an issue. It's been very hot where I'm at, very humid. I mean, even on the switches, you get a ton of grip with this thing. I've had no desire or reason for having to throw grips on this mouse. All right, so let's go ahead and drop a sound test on how the clicks perform and how they sound. All right guys, as you can clearly see there, nice and tight, nice and crisp. All around, this truly is my favorite feeling mouse on the market, hands down. Balance on these is just truly perfect. Perfect front to back. And when it comes to the left and right balance, overall the left to right balance is just completely solid. The new software for these mice, once you load it up, as you can see, you got the mouse here. You just click on it, you come to this screen. In order to change the debounce time, you have to come down here and check this box. I personally prefer setting the debounce time down to zero milliseconds. Now, if you're having any issues where you find the mouse double clicking or slam clicking or anything like that, you can adjust this grader, but I like to keep this as low as possible to try and reduce the click latency down to as minimal as I possibly can. And then coming over here to the second page this is where you can set your DPI. And this is also where you'll be able to enable the 4K option. If you picked up the charcoal version using the 4K dongle, this should be hooked up for you, ready to go out of the box. However, if you did get the polar white, or the Elegant Blue Edition. I'll go ahead and show you really quick, really easily, how you compare the Pro Edition to the 4K dongle. And I do actually have a secondary mouse plugged into my computer. That way I'll be able to use that mouse to navigate around and to be able to pair these together. And you can just simply do this right here in the intro menu. All you're going to do is you're going to hit spacebar on your keyboard. By hitting spacebar on your keyboard, it does bring up this prompt. And at this time, what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to make sure that you do have the 4K dongle plugged in to your PC. You do want to make sure that you do have your mouse turned on and you want to put the mouse in pairing mode. In order to put the mouse in pairing mode, all you simply need to do is just hold down left and right click and push down the middle mouse button all at the same time. You hold it for a few seconds, and as you can see here, once you do that, you will have a yellow LED indicator flashing at the top of the mouse, letting you know that the mouse is currently in pairing mode. All you do is you'll click on this box right here, and it will begin the pairing process for you. And after it shows the pairing process is complete, you should be able to click into the mouse, go into the software, and at this point you should have the 2K polling rate and the 4K polling rate options enabled in the software. I often get asked a lot about what types of skates I prefer to use on these mice, and to be completely honest with you, the stock skates that come out of the box, they work incredibly well. And overall, I do feel like the smaller skates, they do give you a really fast and consistent glide. And as I had mentioned earlier, in the box, they do also give you a set of bigger skates with the Mini and with the OG V2 as well. I have also been really enjoying these skates. I feel like they have a really smooth and fast glide, but I do feel like you get a little bit more control when using these skates and overall you do get a little bit better stopping power. So for me personally, I do prefer using these skates over the smaller ones if I am playing shooters like Valorant 
or CSGO. And they truly work great in any type of game that you could want to play, just depending on your mouse pad and the overall feel that you're looking for. And another thing that I've been testing out is the dot skates. I have tried dot skates before and I wasn't necessarily a fan, just if you use like two skates at the top and two skates on the bottom. But as you can see here, I did try messing around with different types of patterns and I kind of felt that something like this with adding a few extra dot skates on here do kind of help out a little bit more and make it overall feel just a little bit more consistent for me and not so much like they're pointy and sinking into the mouse pad. I would have to say that currently this has been one of my favorite setups. I've been really enjoying the dot skates. I do feel like you do get quite a bit of a faster glide even over these smaller stock skates and overall it's been a pretty good enjoyable experience for playing games like Apex Legends. And then two more options that Lanzu actually offers is they do sell glass skates and they sell these sapphire skates as well. I have been really enjoying these glass skates they've been really impressing me i've used them quite a bit in the past two weeks and the glide hasn't really changed on me again i do want to stress i am in a hot and humid environment they haven't really been too muddy they are really quick these are some of the fastest glass skates that i've ever used if you're looking for the fastest glide possible and more importantly if you're looking for the least amount of static friction when moving the mouse around whether you're doing the micro adjustments or the up close micro tracking these things are super quick and it really is about as good as it gets. And then finally, when it comes to the Sapphire skates, I truly have been enjoying these Sapphire skates. They are actually really quick as well. The one major difference that I would say that these have over the glass skates is I do feel like these give you a lot more control. Again, when you're doing the micro adjustments, I feel like where with the glass skates, I would overshoot my shots in the beginning. I feel like these were a lot more natural, a lot easier to get used to. And if you're playing any type of games where you really are concerned about holding your mouse still or making sure you can get the pointer exactly where you want it, again, I do feel like these give you a little bit more control. They just don't feel as quick or I would say probably as slippery as the glass skates do. And lastly, one thing I wanted to mention is when you are using all these different skates, it does actually add a weight difference to the mouse. So I'll go and throw these on a scale really quick for you and show you the differences. All right, so first up, if you're using the dot skates, I did find that the dot skates in that configuration they can shave off about a gram of weight and next up if you do prefer to use the larger skates over the stock skates that come on the mouse it does add about an additional gram of weight to the mouse when it comes to using the glass skates i have found that the glass skates they add about two additional grams of weight to the mouse and then last but not least same thing when it comes to the sapphire skates they add a little bit over two additional grams of weight to the mouse. The shape of the Lamzu Atlantis OG V2. This is truly one of my favorite shapes out there on the market. When I grip the mouse, I play pretty much with a claw grip using it. And to look there, that's kind of what I hold it like. Sometimes I'll hold it a little bit further forward. It just depends on how I'm feeling. But overall, this is pretty much what it looks like when I'm gripping the mouse. Some of the reasons why this mouse is my favorite shape is it does have the rear hump. So I find that I get a lot of support when I press the bottom of my hand on the top of the hump here with the mouse. And then when it comes to sides, it does have these fairly aggressive curves on the sides. It's nice and easy to lock your fingers into. And another thing about the mouse is it does start out and it gets more narrow at the bottom of the mouse. And it kind of flares out as it's going to the top and gets wider towards the top. And when comparing the Lamzu Atlantis OG V2 to something like the Logitech G Pro Superlight, as you can see here, they're pretty similar in the length between both of these mice. The biggest difference is, however, is starting at the top, the G Pro does have this high middle hump and it tapers off very slowly towards the rear. Whereas on the Lamzu Atlantis, it does have a rear hump giving you more support in the back of the mouse, but I do feel like it tapers off more quickly to the rear. And I feel like this little bottom part of the Logitech G Pro Superlight, it kind of sticks in the back of my palm a little bit more. And overall in the hands, it kind of makes the G Pro Superlight feel like a bit of a longer mouse with how I grip it. When I'm using the Lambs Atlantis, the way that I grip it, I just feel like the short back kind of gives me a little bit more free range of motion. And overall, it kind of makes the mouse just feel a little bit shorter in the hands. And when it comes to the side profiling on both of these mice, as you can see here, the Lambsu definitely has much more aggressive curves on the side. Whereas the Logitech G Pro, it just feels flatter front to back and even bottom to top, it feels like a lot flatter of a mouse. To the top of the Logitech G Pro Superlight, it curves more aggressively from the top middle of the mouse, falling off quickly and more aggressively to the sides. To whereas on the top of the Lambs of Atlantis, it has this soft curve from the top of the mouse to the sides, making it feel overall wider at the top of the mouse. And even though the Logitech G Pro Superlight is one of the most popular mice on the market, for me personally, I just feel like the Lambs of Atlantis shape suits me and my grip style just way better.
And when comparing the Lamzu Atlantis OG V2 to the Lamzu Atlantis Mini. Now clearly both of these mice are basically the exact same shape. One is just a little bit scaled down from the other one. One thing that I do see people talk about is since the Atlantis Mini is a little bit shorter, and a little bit smaller. I have seen people saying that the curves on the Lambs Atlantis Mini, they do feel a bit more aggressive than on the OG V2. With the Atlantis Mini just being a little bit more short, a little bit lower feeling to the ground, and overall just a little bit more narrow. Both of these mice, they still have the same size side buttons, which I actually really like and I enjoy the back of the mice. The Lamzu Atlantis OG V2 sits a little bit taller than the Lamzu Atlantis Mini, and it sits a bit wider at the top and bottom of the mouse as well. One of the hardest questions that people ask me all the time is, which one do I prefer, the Lamzu Atlantis Mini or the OG V2? I truly love them both just about as much as equally as one another. You know, sometimes I feel like I perform better with smaller mice just because I get a little bit more free range of motion in my hands. So if you do prefer something smaller, if you like, like maybe the X2 Mini or the Razer Viper Mini, then your best bet might be to go with something like the Lambs Atlantis Mini. So if you do prefer larger style mice, something like the Death Adder V3 Pro, the Logitech G Pro Super Light, if those are kind of on the scale of what you like to use and you feel like you perform best with, then I really feel like you can't go wrong with the Lambs Atlantis OG V2. Either way, both of these mice are my absolute favorite and I don't feel like you can go wrong with either one. All right, then next up when comparing the Lambs Atlantis OG V2 to the Death Adder V3 Pro. When it comes to the overall length of these mice, as you can see, they're pretty similar to one another. The major differences here is, as you can see here, the Death Adder V3 Pro, it absolutely has this really high center hump. Whereas the Atlantis OG V2 has more of a rear hump. And then when it comes to side profiling here, obviously the Atlantis is more of an ambi style mouse and it does have more aggressive curves on the side. And then obviously the Death Adder V3 Pro being an ergo shaped mouse, it slants down towards the right side whereas left to right the Lamzu Atlantis feels flatter and as you can see over here on the back of the Lamzu Atlantis it has a much less aggressive curve going from the top middle of the mouse to the sides and overall it makes the top of the mouse feel a bit wider in the hands either way I feel like both of these mice are some of the best options out there on the market it just depends on how you prefer to grip your mouse comparing the Lambs Atlantis OG V2 to the VGN Dragonfly F1. The two biggest differences I noticed between these two mice is that overall the VGN Dragonfly feels flatter at the top of the mouse, whereas as you can see here on the Lambs Atlantis, you do have this rear hump and I feel like you get a lot more support in the palm of your hand with the Lambs Atlantis. The side curvature profile on these mice, they do feel pretty similar. They both have pretty aggressive curves. And again, on the VGN Dragonfly, it's just a bit flatter from the bottom to the top of the mouse. I would say that the Dragonfly feels like a little bit more of a narrow and longer feeling mouse, even though they're about the same length, just with how low the top of the mouse sits. And as you guys can see here from the back of the mice, it does have this more aggressive curve from the top of the mouse over to the sides, whereas again, the Lambsu Atlantis has this soft curve from the middle of the mouse over to the sides, giving it that wider feeling at the top of the mouse. So at the end of the day, I would absolutely say that the VGN Dragonfly is a flatter, more narrow feeling mouse over the Lambsu Atlantis. And next up when comparing the Lambs Atlantis OG V2 to the Pulsar X2. Both of these mice feel pretty similar in length. I would say the two biggest differences between these mice is first off, I feel like the sides on the X2, as you can see here, they're a lot flatter 
than on the Lambzu Atlantis, where the Lambzu Atlantis has much more aggressive curves. And the same thing on the X2, where it curves less aggressively at the bottom of the mouse up to the top. And I do feel like on the X2, the curve, again, as you can see here, it kind of curves down the sides more aggressively. I do feel like the rear hump on the X2, it feels a little bit more pointy and a little bit more aggressive. Whereas you can see here, just overall, the Lambs Atlantis just feels smoother and it doesn't feel as pointy in the hands. Either way, both of these mice have incredible shapes and they're absolutely some of my favorite mice to use. And then finally, we'll be comparing the Lambs Atlantis OG V2 versus the Endgame Gear XM2 WE. Both of these mice do have a lot of similarities to one another. Again, I would say some of the biggest differences. As you can see here, the curves on the XM2 WE, they do look a little bit aggressive. However, I do kind of feel like the curves on the Atlantis OG V2, they do feel a little bit more aggressive, especially due to the side profile. As you can see, it feels a little bit more flat from bottom to top here on the XM2 WE. And again, overall, it does have that lower curve where it's more narrow at the bottom of the mouse and gets wider towards the top. And then similarly again, as you can see here, when it comes to the back of these mice, again, I do feel like on the XM2 WE, I do feel like the rear hump feels a little bit more pointy and just a little bit more aggressive. Whereas overall, as you can see on the back of the Lambs Atlantis, again, has that really smooth curve where it just overall feels softer and it doesn't feel as pointy at the top of the mouse. Either way, I really love both of these mice. I just feel like on the Lambs Atlantis, it feels just a little bit lighter in the hands and even the switches feel a lot easier to spam for me. All right guys, so that about wraps things up on the Lambs Atlantis OG V2 4K. I truly love these mice. In my truthful opinion, these are as good as it gets. I would say these are my top recommendation. This mouse has been sitting on my desk for the past two weeks. It's been my main mouse. Every once in a while, I'll swap between this and the Lambs Atlantis Mini. Even though there's a bunch of other truly great mice that are out there on the market, even when I'm done testing them, I always find myself coming back to these. As just for me personally, these are the mice that I perform best with in my gameplay, with my grip style, and the overall feeling of them. So if you have any questions or you feel like there's anything that I left out, please let me know down in the comments below. Aside from that, if you have enjoyed watching this video and you'd like to see more videos like this in the future, please drop this video a like and subscribe to my channel. Thank you guys so much for watching this video and I look forward to seeing you in the next one.